Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4, and we are going to read in verse 6 and 7. The Bible said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want to speak to you on the subject, and a lighthearted subject. The, the title is entitled uh, Warm Boots and Sweet Potatoes. But really what I want to do is give you a, a, a biblical answer for anxiety. We are uh, looking at verse 6 specifically. It says be careful, and this means full of care or anxious. Prayer means worship or oratory. But then supplication means petition and request, and thanksgiving certainly means gratitude. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, 13, uh, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And really, as we look at the solution for the biblical answer for anxiety, be careful for nothing. This is a day where there's the increased suicide rates, increased tension, increase in inner turmoil in, in the nation. There's a lot of problems, and there's a lot of reasons that people would say, well, I'm, live, I'm living through or having problems with anxiety. Uh, I want to tell you something, that what you ingest, what you put in your body, has a large bearing on what happens to your attitudes and actions, believe it or not. Um, it's very important that you be very careful and that you research. And, and if you're, you know, some, because we've all experienced some level of anxiety, right? Right? They're just two of us. So, so anyway, at some, some level of anxiety in our life. So I watched this video on YouTube. It, the guy has a channel called What I Have Learned. And, and it, it talked about, is, is coffee making you anxious? Fat and anxious is actually what it said. I think it says fat and anxious. And I'm thinking, well, I'm working on the fatness now. <laughs> and every, <laughs> every once in a while, I, I do have uh, bouts of what in the world is wrong. You ever been there? Okay, more than two of us. So what I did, uh, you know, I, I laid off a of coffee for a whole uh, uh, month. And I said, after I watched that video, I said, I, I'm going to put that guy to the test. So that morning, I drank two of my normal uh, cups of uh, coffee. And uh, lo and behold, about midday, I'm like, man, you know, just kind of anxious, uptight. And I said, that, that's it, no more. I'm, I'm done. And, you know, I, I told you a couple of weeks ago that I, I, I got off of milk. I really did. And I've already lost seven pounds, six, seven pounds, something like that. Just in two weeks, that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, but I know you're not going to give up your ice cream. <laughs> but when we look at anxiety, yeah, there's external things that can happen. But really, it comes down to a point, it, isn't, this, isn't this the truth, that many times we focus on things that we cannot control. And we say, that, that's driving me crazy. I've told you a thousand times, I'll tell you again. You and I agree that there, there may be something that we cannot control. That is not what drives me crazy because I, we agree I can't control it. What drives me crazy is the desire to control something I cannot control. Therefore, I am very anxious and I'm very upset and I let those things dominate my life. I can't control them. I cannot control what goes on in Charleston. I can't even control what goes on in Marion County. What I can do is influence where I can influence and leave it alone and let God deal with it. Right. We, we are a result of the decisions that we've made or things that we've tolerated over time. So when we look at all the things that can cause us anxiety, we need to understand that God said, be careful for nothing. In other words, reliance on the Lord versus self-reliance. See, reliance on the Lord versus self-reliance. There's so many times that you and I try to take burdens on our own, own, own lives and we try to, try to perceive that I'm going to live this way. No, what I ought to do is God said in everything, in everything. Notice the verse, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now let me give you the verses. 
Psalm 34 and verse 6, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Psalm 55, verse 17, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. In Psalm 55, 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So we look at the illustrations, really, if you look with me in 2 Chronicles 32. 2 Chronicles 32, and we're going to look at verse 7 and 8. So in this portion of Scripture, in verse 7 and 8, you have a situation where the people in Hezekiah are in great, great oppression. And they uh, are facing great difficulty. But I want you to notice what Hezekiah's reliance and his faith on God gave the people great rest. Notice what it says in verse 7. Hezekiah says to them, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that, are, uh, that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. They they had rest. In Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Here's what I'm trying to encourage you. You and I don't need to be anxious for anything. The things that are simple that we let bother us are probably things we can't control anyway. We just need to give it to God. By the way, you can't change somebody else's personality. You can't change the way you want them to conform to what you think they should be. If you, want, if you think they ought to change, including your spouse, why don't you start asking God to change them? Why don't you start, because let me tell you, when you start praying and asking God, would you change this or change that, you're not going to make unbiblical requests. You're going to have to pray in, in, in accordance with God's word. God, help my spouse to be in this area, right? Because it's a point of help, but you, you can't walk around and dictate for somebody to change. So there's a lot of things we get frustrated with people. See, if it wasn't for people, we wouldn't have all these problems, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, so uh, yeah, one, one day my dad told a guy, he said, if, you, if people disagree with you, do, do you think they're wrong? He said, yeah. And so my dad said, do you know anybody that agrees with you 100%? My dad, and the man said, uh, no. My dad said, well, does that, do you know that makes you the only man on the face of the earth that's right? That's kind of messed up, isn't it? But we, we, get, we, get, we get aggravated at people. What we need to do is focus on the Lord, and our reliance has got to be on the Lord, even when we're facing hard difficulties. Supplications. So the Bible said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this issue of supplications in Psalm 116, verse 1 through 6. I'm going to ask you, uh, if you would look there, Psalm 116, verse 1 through 6. Supplications. So you're going through difficulties. Listen, there's something Dr. Creed told me a long time ago. He said, anytime you're dealing with people, they are, they are either in a problem, they're coming out of a problem, or they're heading into a problem. You know, that really helps you keep things in perspective. But I want to give you some encouragement that I heard one, day, one, one time. I was, I was down in, 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 in the blessed state of Louisiana I was home visiting, and I went to a pastor's fellowship, and this old Louisiana preacher was rare back, letting it rip, 
And he said, you understand that when, you, when, when, when you're on the mountaintop and then you get down the valley and things are hard. Hey, it takes two mountains to make a valley. So you're going right back up. Yeah, I learned that until I got to West Virginia. I realized, well, that valley, you just keep on running out straight if you're not careful. Somewhere you got to turn to turn up there, right? Psalm 116, verse 6. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. It's a sad thing to see people let circumstances happen in their life. They don't keep it in biblical perspective, and then they're not even in church. I mean, come on, really. What are you going to do? You're 50, 60, 70 years old, and you're not in church. You're miserable. You, you know that's the truth. Verse 3, the sorrows of death can pass me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. You know, Daniel made this statement. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keep the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Listen to what Daniel said. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly. And have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And that's right where America is. You, you, listen. People don't listen. People don't listen to Bible truth. People don't respond to it. If they listen to it many times, they just sit and they don't respond to it. What, uh, here, here's a good litmus test for me to always ask myself. How much more am I growing today than I was previously? What am I currently doing to grow in the Lord on a personal basis? And then what am I doing for the cause of Christ? That's a good litmus test. Because many times we think, well, I'm going to go to church, I show up at church and everything's okay, and I just go about my routine as soon as I get out the door. And that's where a lot of Christians live their lives. So when you, when you examine your life, are you making forward progress? Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you going? All those things in our, our, our lives are very, very uh, dependent upon, are you, see, if there's, Brother Brian mentioned it last week. If there's areas in your life to where you're not living right for the Lord, that, you, you know, it's not anxiety. It's called conviction. The Holy Spirit of God, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of redemption. So there's times in our life that we're living and we're not doing what we know God has us to do. I mean, how long have you been saved? You, you, know what, you know what happens is we talk about what we used to do instead of what we are doing. Right. There's the Papa Rutuli is I, I don't know if he's still living, but as I Papa Rutuli, uh, brother Jameson and I had a great time with him in, in New, we, we actually went from Philadelphia over to, into New Jersey. And uh, we had an awesome time with about a 90 year old man. I'm assuming 80. He looked 90. Bless his heart. He's a wonderful man. But you know what? Out there, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning. Of course, we were, we, were, we were back when you lived in America and people could actually go somewhere and fellowship with one another. Yeah. And so we were in a, at a big festival thing and he'd just pull young guys aside and pull them by the arm and say, come here, son. I got something to say. And, and share with you. you. You know, the older you get, the more you ought to love God. The older you get, you ought to realize, you know, I've only been here a little while and I, I really need to get busy for the Lord, right? The older you get, you ought to be sweeter. See? Right? Right? Uh, the older you get, you ought to be more loving. You ought to be more kind. You ought to be more understanding. But you ought to be more active in your Christian life because you are, you are fixing the traits over into heaven 
and enjoy what Jesus Christ has for you. Jacob told his family members, it came to a point to let's go back to Bethel and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. I want to tell you something. It doesn't matter how old you are. You and I need to make our mind up. We're gonna, we are going to ask the Lord to help us. We're going to rely upon the Lord. If you young people will listen to your preacher and listen to the word of God and access God early, it will save you so much misery. I can't, even, I can't even explain it. Just do what God says. See, Thanksgiving is the most difficult, really. If, let's think about anxiety. You, you, right? So I, I told this guy one time, I, I, I personally don't believe if you're an angry person, you, you, your, your problem is that you, you, you have a lack of love in your life. If you're always, you're, you're very prideful and you, you have a lack of love. I, I'm just an angry person. So I, I talked to this guy many years ago and uh, he came to me and he said, Brother Bowman, he said, I, I went to anger management. I said, didn't it help you? He said, no, I walked out anger angry he said all they did was talk about what made me angry and so i the, the more they talk the more angry i got <laughs> i have some help right the bible has the answer but you when you and i are experiencing uh go back with me to philippians so that you're in your text verse when you and i are experiencing anxiety Man, it's hard to, it's really, really hard to be thankful. Isn't it? Nobody agrees. Man, you ought to sometimes say amen so these people know I'm not preaching in, a, in my closet. And thank you. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Really, when I'm experiencing uh, anxiety or I'm dealing with things like what we've dealt with in our nation, it's just travesty. And it's only going to get worse. But that's okay because God lets me live here for free. The government don't think that. But God lets me live here for free. God let me be born here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect what's right and what's my duty, but this is not my home. Amen. One day I'm going home to be with him. <laughs> my family members and my friends, as soon as I get there, they're going to say, where you been? <laughs> it's the most difficult thing to be thankful when you're under great pressure and when you're experiencing great hardship. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Friend, there's some, one, there's some, time, there's some time when no one else is left to stand. There's some time when no one else can stand. There's, no, there's some time when no one else will stand. But you look at David, and this is something we learned that's very important in the life of David. All those that are with you are not with you. David learned that out real quick. He learned that real quick. Those, just, those that are congregated with you necessarily might not be with you because the very people that were following him were ready to kill him. I, I mean, kill him. You and, you and I, maybe we've had situations where somebody wants to kill us. But the average American, no. And I, I can't even imagine being a warrior among warriors, and they're talking about, let's stone him. Man, that hor horrible. But you know what he did? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. In rejoicing, it's so hard sometimes in, in hardship to rejoice. But we know in Genesis 24, and the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So when we look at all these things, we, we need to understand that. It, listen, in Psalm 103, go with me there, please. Psalm 103.
Psalm 103, we're going to read verse 1 through 5. So the Bible said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Okay, so when you're facing anxiety, do you have a tendency to forget what God's given you? You know why we constantly want to buy, 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 buy? Because not satisfied with what we have. Right, right. That's, as soon as that car loses that car smell, we start thinking, man, maybe I need to trade this joker in. Right? Yeah. Some people ride it till the, door, till the wheels fall off. My dad always says, hey, car repairs are cheaper, are better than, are cheaper than car notes. I haven't found that to be tr true in my own case, but I do know that it worked for him. I guess that's because he bought something that I didn't buy at the time. Look at me in verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Okay, so benefits in verse 2. Forgiveness in verse 3. Kindness, loving kindness and tender mercies in verse 4. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I, I, look, why in the world would a Christian be constantly in, involved in anxiety? Well, it could be something you're eating. Honestly, it could be. You, you, you need to find out. And listen, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about sweet potatoes and warm boots later. But I, I want to say this. My mama said, I, I asked her, I said, so when you were growing up, because my mother was born in Coles, Mississippi, and my, my grandfather was a sharecropper. They were extremely poor. And my, my mom said, uh, I said, how was it with meat? I mean, how often did you, you, you have animals to eat or whatever? She said, well, I'm going to tell you like Hank Aaron said. She said, I was vegetarian before it ever was cool or anybody knew what it was to be a vegetarian. And she said, every once in a while, we got chicken, right? You ever eat yard bird? Man, it's some good stuff, isn't it? And unless they've been running a lot. That, that chicken's tough. But, <laughs> but a friend of mine, a preacher friend of mine, he said, look, we are so poor. He said, if it came across our yard one time with feathers, the next time it came across our yard was across my plate with gravy. <laughs> Sometimes you look at the things that God's given us and we take it for granted. Right. And sometimes the anxiety comes in our life because you're eating garbage. Yeah. Do, you, do you live to eat or do you eat to live? Right. See, Many Christians are, are, are have all kind of health problems because they just won't stay fit. It only takes about 20 or 30 minutes a day to stay actively fit. You're, you're in a day, and I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion. You're in a day where you really need to start learning how to fast. You need to learn how to miss some meals. Well, I, I have this and I have... You might want to do your research. Miss some meals because things are changing and your food... Uh, might not be as available in the future as you think it is. Right. If you read about current martyrs that are facing very difficult hardships in foreign countries, you'll realize that you, you may be the one that has to crawl in the woods to be able to get shelter for hours and hours of crawling. See, you never know what's going to happen in your life. We take all this for granted. But it's here because of God's blessings. And then we're walking around the richest people on the face of the earth. And all you got to do is go to the third world country and find out that's the truth. We're walking around the richest people on the earth. Sad, depressed, fat, happy, lazy, you, you name it. More suicides, right? More problems with anxieties. Well, I'm depressed. Well, how often have you been in the Word of God? Do you study the Bible till it burns you? Do you study the Word of God to the point to where it fills up your cup and you stand up and it's like, who cares, man? They're going to do what they're going to do. I'm going to focus on God's Word. It does, I don't abdicate responsibility. But what I do is I prioritize my relationships. 
And my relationship with the Lord is paramount. But everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's why, and this is how, that a Christian can stand in the face of all kind of adversity and be unmovable and unstoppable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed.